Hello, here is Grandmaster Misha Pop, and uh, I will be presenting you how to play uh, uh, Labordone Kalashnikov Sicilian in this video course. Uh, you might uh, be asking yourself uh, what is this all about and why should you play this Sicilian? Well, first of all, uh, let me show you how this starts. So, uh, we play Sicilian e4, c5, white goes knight f3, knight c6, d4, cd4, knight d4, e5, early e5. So, this is the difference uh, between this Sicilian and, for example, if somebody wants to go for knight f6, knight c3, e5, now we have... Um, famous Sveshnikov or uh, Lasker Sicilian. Some people call this Lasker Sicilian, but let's say Sveshnikov Sicilian. So, E5, early E5, yes. We can call it also early E5 Sicilian, but uh, usually nowadays it, goes, nowadays it goes under the name Kalashnikov Sicilian or, uh, yes, I prefer to call it Labordone Sicilian. Uh, what's the point? The point of this early uh, e5 is that it gives black some additional uh, options as well. So knight b5 is the main move and now d6. So we are not going to uh, this, uh, you know, explore or discuss some other uh, less worthy, in my opinion, uh, lines like a6, knight d6. All those, all those lines and similar lines where you allow this knight d6 are, you know, dubious, uh, strategically, strategically problematic, and this is uh, what uh, I can't really recommend you to play and try with black pieces, unless maybe in some blitz play, or maybe, maybe, just maybe in some rapid games. So d6 is the move. And now basically white has uh, two options. I mean white can say okay. I will try to punish you and play c4 and say okay now I have control over the d5 square. Or white can just play a more or less a, a normal move like uh, we can say knight 1 to c3. Yes, and so what is this all about? Uh, why should you uh, play this uh, Sicilian? And uh, why, I mean, I mean uh, to whom it could be useful? Uh, well, okay, in my opinion, this is uh, very suitable for people who basically uh, don't want to learn too much theory because there is, yes, uh, to be honest with you, there is not much theory, I mean, of course, of course, uh, like with, with, with any other opening, you have to learn some theory. It's un inevitable, it's unavoidable, especially nowadays with uh, 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 so much information about every line, every variation, every sub-variation. So you have to uh, learn some theory. And that's my idea with this uh, uh, course. I will present to you some material in uh, you know approachable uh, 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 way so that you can learn it without any problems and also um, it could be useful for people who you know who don't want to be under attack you know if if you don't feel comfortable that uh, your king is under attack that you know your opponent with white pieces is simply launching the, the pawn avalanche against your king side and against your king which usually happens in many Sicilians usually white would be you know going all in with f4 g4 h4 g5 f5 I mean it could be quite uh, uh, dangerous sometimes especially in some uh, neither lines yes ultra sharp neither lines or, for example, if somebody tries to play some Dragon Sicilian, he could be simply mated. Of course, today there is so much theory in Dragon Sicilian and so on. So, as I said, if you are searching, if you want to play Sicilian, which is a good counter-attacking uh, opening, 
but you don't you don't feel like you know getting under under attack you don't want to be under attack you know under mating threats that's fine this is sicilian for you uh of course it offers uh, some sicilian features i mean you can play for counter attack and so on and so on this is of course uh, very dynamic uh, and um, good opening solid opening but uh, as i said it's more solid than other sicilians of course uh, then it has also some kind of uh, you know some kind of uh, 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 drawback if if you want to say that well i uh, honestly i don't believe that this is a big issue in this sicilian having a, a weak d5 square usually this is the only uh, weak thing about this sicilian so we will uh, concede uh, d5 square to white yes and white will have his d5 square and probably not much more yeah not much more uh, black is going to uh, simply finish development castle without any problems there will be no pawn avalanche going your way there will be no mating attacks against you it's just that white has d5 square but with very good preparation and with smart play even that will not be a problem so if you somehow recognize yourself you know in all these uh, features of this sicilian so first of all it is a solid opening it doesn't uh, uh, bother you it doesn't burden you with too much theory and your king is not going to be under direct threat uh it it is a little bit more positional if you want to look at it that way uh but on the other hand it offers you uh some nice features of sicilian opening which is you know counter attacking chances and dynamic play and don't worry you know hidden there there are a lot of tactical possibilities um uh, okay what else should i say um also i will be presenting to you in this extensive course well, maybe it's not extensive it's not very uh, a long time i mean uh, if you want to follow this course uh, and to learn all this in just uh, 10 hours approximately i think this is uh, fine because for me to learn all this material which i will be presenting to you it took some some years and a lot of practice so i will be showing you many years of practice and a lot of knowledge which i which i accumulate accumulated during over the years uh also i will be presenting to you different ways how you can comfortably uh, parry the threats of all those uh, annoying some annoying uh, uh, anti-sicilian lines but also some other serious uh, uh, alternatives to open sicilian so for example in my opinion a serious alternative to open sicilian is c3 sicilian this is a serious alternative or close sicilian could be uh again very uh, viable option maybe some grand prix attack uh, you know maybe somebody would like to use that i will show you you know solution for every each and every of those things also we will de deal with uh, somehow tricky smith mora gambit or some people call it matulovic gambit and you will have all those things covered in this in this course i hope you will like this but uh, let me just show you one more thing before i uh, uh, finish so as i said you will get uh, coverage of all the sidelines if white tries to op uh, if white tries to avoid open sicilian and i'll present to you very nice and uh, solid uh, uh, kalashnikov or labordone early e5 sicilian uh, let me just uh, give you you know some kind of uh, some taste of this sicilian which uh, what might happen in this 
So when we go into this Sicilian e5, uh, of course uh, white has several options. I mean he can go knight b3, knight c3 and so on. But let me just show you, uh, uh, for example, if white plays uh, a move which is knight b3. And uh, you know, uh, if people are not very well uh, theoretically prepared, sometimes they would go for this knight b3, especially in rapid game. And then many times, I mean in many rapid games, I simply took over the initiative by playing simple chess, knight f6, knight c3, bishop b4, pawn is attacked, bishop d3, just simple d5, he has to take, knight d5, pawn is hanging, what to do, take, go back, castle, castle, and now already here after 11 moves, black is totally fine, and after f5, Black is going to uh, take over initiative. So just like that, straight out of the opening, you got a strategically better position with black pieces, which doesn't happen very often, yes? And white has ruined pawn structure. Yeah. Of course, uh, <laughs> I, I don't promise you this in, in many games or in any, every game, because knight b3 is simply a bad move. This is not the move. Also, white can try to play a move like knight f5 or knight c6, but I will, I'll cover all those things. I'll show you all those things, of course. And black is fine in all those variations. Uh, for example, move like knight c6 can't be good, it's just we will welcome that. Now, now black has, uh, uh, you know, stronger center. Black has more pawns in the center than white, which is not... Uh, something what happens usually in Sicilian, yes? Usually black is the side with small center having pawns on usually d6 and e6 or d6 and e5. So knight b5 and d6 and let me just show you small, this, well, just a small demonstra demonstration just as, uh, so that you get a taste of this. What might happen in this Sicilian? For example, if white says, okay, let me play knight 1c3, I don't care, you don't have so many options, because this is nothing special, okay. Then we just go a6, knight e3, b5. Obviously white has to go knight d5, there is nothing else. And here uh, I'll show you, you know, several ways what you can do here. Usually uh, my recommendation would be knight g7 for you. But also black can try and play, if you like, you can go knight uh, c e7, which was also used by famous uh, grandmaster Karyakin and also some other strong, uh, strong grandmasters. This is also quite uh, a viable option for black, but as I said, I would uh, focus on knight g7. Also, you can simply play move like bishop e7, which is very simple and... Uh, easy easy solution for black and just uh, continuing with knight f6 and so on and also there is a move like rook b8 why rook b8 but that's simply because now after c4 we will be uh, black would be ready to play b4 yeah actually rook b8 is basically about this and now, for example, after knight c2, immediately move like uh, knight f6 is possible, or, I mean, black can uh, continue with bishop p7 and knight f6 and so on. Bishop p7, knight f6 and, and so on. The game game goes on. Yeah. What is the difference? The difference is, for example, if you play a move like... Uh, knight g e7 let's say you play a move like bishop e7 what is the difference between this now after c4 you can't uh, use b4 move that's the problem one of the problems yeah because now knight before knight before there is queen a4 check and that that could be a small uh, problem for for black so bishop e7 is probably uh, yeah, not one of those best ideas, but still playable. But for example, rook b8 could be a, a serious option, serious side, side, uh, you know, 
uh, a move which you can use occasionally and I also used it once or twice no I use this move uh, more often yeah, and also in the classical games against strong gems and uh, once uh, I made a draw against uh, uh, a very strong 2650 Grandmaster in the classical game so rook b8 is quite solid but let's just say we go knight g7 why knight g7 uh, why because if you play knight f6 here then you are simply transposing to Lasker Sicilian or Svechnikov Sicilian uh, which is called today uh, I don't want to say there is nothing wrong with this it's totally fine but this is different opening this is Svechnikov Lasker Sicilian and that's another story if you like to play this no problem there are many famous GMs who use this with uh, success successfully for example Gelf and uh, Carlsen also use this so no problem with that if you like to play this okay but my recommendation is uh, also knight c7 there is no problem but I would be recommending you knight g7 and rook b8 in this position usually knight g7 and now uh, white should really go for c4 if he doesn't uh, I mean he has to uh, get this knight in play and also he has to do something about about this pawn so playing move like c3 is simply too soft in this position because now immediately after knight d5 black is just fine let's say this knight is sent black will be fine in few moves uh, black will uh, finish his development and it will be fine and later on in the game black will have opportunity even to push f5 without any problems also going for queen d5 i had this in several games now you have a very nice option to play simply queen c7 later on bishop e6 is coming rook d8 black will be even overtaking initiative in many cases which uh, also happened in some of my games so c3 is not the move black white has to go for c4 if he wants to try something and then uh, knight d4 is the main move and here okay there is a move cb5 there is line cb5 which is the main uh, line here we will check that of course i'll show you how to handle that uh, and uh, okay there are also some other other ideas but uh, let's say white plays a logical move it looks like logical move because not that everybody would like to go cb5 you know maybe he's afraid that you are uh, uh, theoretically prepared which you will be of course so uh, let's say he plays knight c2 this looks like a normal move right so we go for knight d5 of course i'll show you in the in the course what happens if white now goes knight d4 which is nothing special again black is just fine or if not better also i want some games like that also here move like ed5 is uh, nothing special so let's say a move normal move cd5 and now it looks like more or less black is fine right there is no problem and uh, after something like knight c2 queen c2 bishop p7 black is just fine no problem straight out of the opening but this is what happened to me i i played against uh, a fide master so believe it or not it was classical game and i played against fide master so not some guy you know some uh, you know a random guy who doesn't play chess too much this was fide master with experience and he got under he got this bam i played bishop g4 i found this over the board uh, because you know i i was just starting to play uh, to play this sicilian and this was played in year 2001 so 20 years ago yes so i have uh, uh you know i have some experience in this in this uh, sicilian over 20 years and first time i i had this position in classical game 20 years ago against fide master my opponent you know he didn't know what to do and uh, he played move like i think queen d2 or queen d3 and black got good position out of the opening and later on i managed even to win the game of course after move like queen d2 or queen d3 position is roughly equal unclear but black is totally fine 
no, not to, to mention to you if uh, you know white plays move like f3 which looks like a logical move and I got uh, you know many nice wins in rapid and in blitz like this with black pieces you just now queen h4 and black is much better already here black is better overtaking initiative if king d2 queen f2 check I mean uh, who could be happy with king like that you know you play with white pieces and you have king on d2 already in the opening this is not how you play with white pieces and uh, this line also shows that uh, you know this is the real Sicilian it gives you a chance to attack your opponent and if uh, white goes g3 this is simply a bad bad idea because after knight f3 white is totally lost the problem is that he can't go queen f3 bishop f3 rook is hanging he has to take on g uh, h4 and bishop h1 black wins simply black wins there is no chance for white no chance he would have to play king f2 here and after queen f6 he can resign without any problems white can simply resign so that's it uh, um, this is one of the ideas how you can uh, you know surprise your opponent beat him quickly and of course I, d I don't want to tell you uh, or recommend you this because of the trick because of uh, you know that we are hoping that white is going to blunder no 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 not nothing like that i'm just showing you what might happen and uh, that this line opening uh, uh, variation is not harmless you know white has to be careful and he has to know what he's doing otherwise he also might end up in in a problematic position yes so of course uh, white can play here as i said uh, Knight def now he can play cb5 or he can play something else with bishop e3 uh, it, the position is just normal and black is fine yes black is fine and of course i will be explaining to you how to how to deal with all these things uh so one one another idea white can get an idea and say okay now the difference between this and svechnikov or lasker sicilian is that now I, g I get to play c4 and I'm really, you know, clumping down on d5. So white is really controlling d5. There is no chance that uh, 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 black can somehow get this d5 square back. Okay, no problem. Here we just go bishop e7. And now a normal uh, line would be uh, to play something like knight 1 c3 a6 this and so on black can go bishop e6 or knight f6 and so on and so on we will see that in in uh, in uh, during this course yes but uh, you know let me just show you what else might happen so this is first game and of course uh, I will always tell you if it was rapid or blitz game because in my opinion classical games have more uh, weight you know uh, more substance if you played something or achieved something in classical game it's more important because that's a real chess and uh, rapid chess or blitz chess okay but it's not the same yes it doesn't have the same value so in one of my blitz, I think it was rapid or blitz game. I don't remember right now. It was played in 2001, 20 years ago against not very strong opponent. But let's see what happened. Bishop e6, knight c3, a6, this and bishop g5. And this is one of those uh, ideas uh, which are typical for this uh, for this uh, uh, um, Sicilian and uh, especially for the variation with c4. Actually, now uh, idea is to exchange dark squared bishops and simply claim d4 square, and black will have very nice, you know, very nice counterplay, and black can also put some pressure uh, against the c4 pawn, uh, and uh, yeah, black will have a nice counterplay over the dark squares, and this will be uh, uh, 
pleasant, uh, you know, pleasant uh, uh, position. Yeah, no problem. Well, White can play uh, Knight C2. White can play Bishop G5. Uh, and here, okay, there are several ideas for White. But what White can't do is he simply can't take on D6 because of this move. And in my Blitz game played 20 years ago, White simply resigned. And also I had a, on internet a few days ago, I had a simple, a similar uh, a scenario. Just my opponent had um, Bishop on E2. <laughs> and then I played, uh, let, let me just show you that. Uh, just a few, uh, a few days ago. Uh, so... White doesn't have to play bishop e3. For example, if white plays bishop e2, uh, something like this. This happened to me on internet a few days ago. So my opponent played like this, and after queen d6, rook d8, basically black is winning, and my opponent simply, simply resigned. There is no hope. I mean, black is winning. There is a double attack. White can resign, and he resigned. Yes, no chance, no chance for for White here. So, as I said, I'm not uh, recommending this because of the tricks, because we are hoping for some, uh, you know, opening uh, trap. But I'm just showing what is what might be possible in this. Also, for example, if your opponent tries move like b3, you know, he might say, "Come on." Let me just simply refute this line in 10 moves and you are done, my friend. Well, let me just show you. It's not so easy to refute this line. Actually, it's not possible. Now we just go with f5. Uh, black should really take on f5 and uh, I'll also show you what happens there. But let's say he goes bishop a3 like in one of my blitz games played many years ago. Knight f6, so this is a, a famous line. And now white has some options. For example, if he takes with the knight, after knight d4 already here, white is lost. For example, if king d1, knight d4, there is no defense, and playing bishop d3 doesn't help, f takes e4. Otherwise, knight c2 is coming, white is busted. But... Uh, in my blitz game, my opponent took bishop d6, threatening maybe knight c7. But this is what happened in the game. And now, if knight c7 and check, few checks, okay, knight a8, uh, then we'll just take on d6 and pick up the, uh, the knight later on. There is also knight b4. But against this, there is queen b4 check and white can resign. I mean... King d1, rook d8, knight d2, rook d8, what to play? King e2 is also uh, running into some mating attack after knight d4. So this is just disaster for for uh, white. So my opponent played uh, in the game bishop e7 and after this white is simply in a lot of pain. f2 is hanging, what to do? He went back but now... Okay, black has several options how to continue, but black has already big advantage. This is what happened. Let me just show you. Okay, just a blitz game, but uh, uh, again, my opponent was Fide Master in this one. So, not some kind of patser or some uh, guy who doesn't know how to play. So, Fide Master. Still, it was blitz game. Takes rook d rook d2, and uh, my opponent simply resigned after just... 22 moves straight out of the opening white resigned to be honest blitz game is not you know nothing special but still still it has some value so if you if you have a uh, you know aspiration to learn uh, a sicilian defense to have a more dynamic more uh, you know a complex fight to give you some counter-attacking chances uh, to have some nice tactical battle uh, uh, to fight for the full point you know with uh, a lot of imagination and interesting 
uh, uh, you know, uh, middle game play. This is one of the ideas. Also, you don't have to learn too much theory. And your king will not come under direct attack. You don't have to suffer deadly kingside attacks against your king. The only thing is what you, what you need to learn is how to handle weakness of the d5 square, which is not a, a big issue. Believe me, this Sicilian is just very reliable and very solid. Maybe somebody might uh, argue that, uh, okay, this Sicilian will not give you so sharp positions as neither. And maybe somebody can say, yes, but you can't win in 15 moves with black pieces like in neither very often. Maybe that's true, yes. But believe me, I had a, a fair share of uh, quick wins in this Sicilian, not only in Blitz and Rapid games, but also in classical two-hour games. I had a fair share of uh, 20 move wins with black pieces playing this Sicilian. So believe me, if you play this Sicilian, Everything is possible, very nice, uh, quick wins, attractive uh, uh, wins uh, with black. And also it gives you uh, a chance to play active chess without much, uh, uh, without tons of theory. So if you, if you like this, please come, come on this journey. In, the, in this chess course about uh, Labordone Kalashnikov Sicilian and uh, I think you will be uh, uh, you will be satisfied when you check all this because you will learn a new system and not only this system as I said I will give you full coverage of all the anti-Sicilians and uh, other uh, serious viable options uh, uh, beside open Sicilian so that's it and uh, uh, as I said this is Grandmaster Misha Pap and I hope that you will like this chess course.